how astonishing it is that language can almost mean, and frightening that it does not quite. Love, we say, God, we say, Rome and Mishko, we write, and words get it all wrong. We say bread, and it means according to which nation. French has no word for home, and we have no word for strict pleasure. A people in northern India is dying out because their ancient tongue has no words for endearment. I dream of lost vocabularies that might express some of what we no longer can. Maybe the Etruscan text would finally explain why the couples on their tombs are smiling, and maybe not. When the thousands of mysterious Sumerian tablets were translated, they seemed to be business records. But what if they are poems or songs? My joy is the same as 12 Ethiopian goats, standing silent in the moonlight. O oh Lord, thou art slabs of salt and ingots of copper, as grand as ripe bark, life under the wind's labor. Her breasts are six white oxen, loaded with bolts of long fibered Egyptian cotton. My love, Shiploads of thuya are what my body wants to say to your body. Giraffes are this desire in the dark. Perhaps the spiral of known script is not a language, but a map. What we feel most has no name, but amber, archers, cinnamon, horses, and birds. When I think about dying, I think about children. Sarah, I promise to consistently work toward being the partner you deserve now and in the future. I will hold fast to all the good we've created while never losing sight of the fact that so much of your life is dedicated to helping people improve themselves, heal themselves, and heal other people in their life. I will take care of myself and take care of us. I promise to keep talking to you just as we've always done. Since our first date to today, we've connected through our words, our ideas, and our enjoyment of just being together. I will pay close attention to you. I will laugh at your jokes, at least the ones that I find funny. <laughs> I will have every conversation with you, both painful and joyful. I promise to seek joy, excitement, and openness with you, and try to match your enthusiasm for new ideas and fascinations that have already brought new cities, new adventures, and new months into our life. As long as it isn't a mid-1980s RV. <laughs> <laughs> to see the look of pure delight dance in your eye when we try something, then holy shit, it's working. <laughs> I promise to support you in both your work and your resting. You are so dedicated to the work that you do. I'm the only one who gets to witness the late nights that you put in to make our life together possible. We both know how to hustle, and we both really need each other to help one another rest. Uh, let's have more lazy days, French toast feasts, and group walks on the beach, and time doing just exactly what we want. I promise to uplift the mountain of inimitable work that you do as a professional and a partner. Your capacity to think ahead and dream ahead is an amazement to me on a daily basis. But you will never nurture and support our happiness alone. Even if I cannot match your foresight, I will have kind, loving words, and some ridiculous spray for impact execution. <laughs> <laughs> at your back, at your back. Uh, Chance, I promise to honor and respect your individuality and agency over your life. I love the traits that make you different from me. You are outgoing, lighthearted, so clever, have a seemingly endless amount of energy, and are open in your affection for me. I love to see you pursue areas of your life that satisfy and delight you as an individual. I will always work to help you lead a life that is meaningful to you. I promise to read, understand, and validate all that you contain in your mind and spirit, from your inner child to your slightly less inner old man. <laughs> in there resides a Sally and Lucy of these, comprising the human I so deeply love. Your needs, thoughts, sensitivities are my privilege and responsibility to comprehend as your husband. When the afternoon calls for a group walk, I'll be there. When it's time for a four-hour conversation, I know which side of the couch you like. <laughs> when you cut the reference to Tupelo Springfield from your vows, I'll understand why. <laughs> and when the beach is too loud, I'll start the car. Uh, 
Hence, I promise to accept all the love and security that you have to give me. You are my safe place. You have so much love to give me, and I'm really grateful to get to receive it. Um, I will always work to protect the security of, of our relationship. You are who I have always been. Start some music, again, cut the cake before the music, <laughs> and you wanna, do you want to do that? Yeah, I'm not feeding it to him, though. No. Nor no. no, are you feeding it to me. I won't feed you the cake. Thank you. <laughs> okay, let's see cake. In Hold silence, on. you want to cut it? No. <laughs> there's no, there's no sixth playlist for cake cutting music. There's the start of the dance, and there's the end of the sitting. Lincoln. <laughs> um, we 
got up to a lot of silliness together. And at times, our minds would wander to the future. Uh, we daydreamed about falling in love, planning a wedding, getting married, like uh, teenagers do. Um, and that's why it's so freaking exciting and equally surreal uh, to be celebrating you two today. I was reminded of um, a part of Virginia Woolf's novel, The Lighthouse. This is the only English major <laughs> reference we make. Um, but she talks about this skill of people who can make of the moment something permanent. So sort of taking um, the everyday occurrences of life and turning them into something that lasts for much, much longer. And I think that's a gift that both Chance and Sarah have separately, but also something that is enhanced when they're together.